There are a lot of theories being tossed around for Season 1 of the OA, including, but not limited to, comas, hallucinations, lies, multiple dimensions, and possibly even the OA being an angel. In this video, I'm not going to dive deeply into any specific theory, but rather, I'm going to list out a bunch of cool stuff that I missed the first time that I watched this season. The number 5 popped up a couple times. Five people are needed for the movement. Oa's normal meal at the restaurant is five cheese pizza, and there were five cracks in the glass of the window. Seven is also a reoccurring number. In Russia, the snow was seven feet high, and Nina spent seven years there before coming to America. The second time she had a near-death experience, her pulse stopped for seven minutes, utterly unresponsive. Seven years ago, when she went missing, she was blind. And the background radio in this scene mentioned a shooter killing seven people in a shopping mall. Lastly, the number on Homer's jersey was seven. Now let's talk about reoccurring events and similarities among the characters. The events at the beginning and the end of episode 8 are very similar. These were the only two times in season 1 that all five movements were used. First, to heal Evelyn, and second, towards the school shooter. Note that both times, someone died of a gunshot wound. And both times, someone chased after a car, yelling, Come back! Now let's take a look at earlier episodes. Steve reminded BBA of her late brother Theo. Homer's jersey is purple with a lone wolf reminding us of O.A.'s sweater. Homer and French had similar head injuries, which makes some fans of the show think that Homer is not a real person, that he's make-believe. But here's one you may have missed. Check this out. You smacked into the edge of a wall and split your forehead open. Do you remember that? When they asked O.A. how she knew they were angels, she told Homer that one reason is because his eyes are green, as clear and as honest as he is. This is a very similar reason to how she got her name. Your eyes are blue as the prairie sky. Prairie. That's what I'll call you. Rachel said that she and her little brother died in a car crash. But listen to the details. It's very similar to a scene with Buck. And I could see my little brother's red backpack in the middle of the road. Music seems to play a part in the mystery. Buck and Rachel can both sing. O.A. can play the violin. Renata is a badass on the guitar. And here's one more that you may have missed. BBA has a keyboard in her bedroom. O.A.'s Russian father was a miner, and Hap held her hostage near a mine. And here's one last similarity. There's a spiral staircase leading down to Hap's dungeon, and we also see him running up a spiral staircase in Cuba. By the end of the season, Owe tells her parents that she is the original angel. I know because I am the original angel. Now let's go back to episode 6. When Hap straps her into the death machine, the arm straps kind of look like angel wings. We also see Katoon with wings in episode 6, so maybe she is also an angel. And lastly, did you notice the angel on the cafeteria wall? Scott has a tattoo that says Mama. Hopefully, we will get more information on her in Season 2. There are some signs that suggest that the multiple dimensions are real. For example, in Episode 3, BBA doesn't just circle the drawings of herself, she boxes it in with a three-dimensional cube. And shortly after, we see Steve go into the physics section of the school for his alternative education class. Now let's take a look at a few things that support one of the other popular tinfoil fan theories. Some people believe that Oe was imprisoned and tortured all by herself, that she has multiple personality disorder and imagined all those other people. In episode 3, Oe tells Hap that she is going to go crazy down there right as his head appears behind hers in the reflection of the glass. They continue talking, and symbolically, it is almost as if she is having a conversation within her own head. In episode 4, Homer listens to a tape where it seems like he is being chased, the chasers state that he is not Homer. What's your name? My name is Homer. What? I, I'm Homer. Your name is not Homer. Look at me. In episode 8, we found out that the O.A.'s parents signed her up for a writing course. 
some fans are speculating that this is evidence that she has been hallucinating all season. The theory is that her parents are hoping that OA will use writing as an outlet for her vivid imagination, instead of running around town acting all crazy. Also in episode 8, there is a very strange phone call. The operator tells her that BBA's phone number is unlisted, and OA stumbles over her words for the rest of the call. I don't actually believe that her five new friends are hallucinations, but the call is very strange, so it's worth listening to one more time. Try French, Alfonso. Alfonso. Ma'am? Sorry, I, 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 don't, I don't know. But thank you. One last sign that many of the events actually occurred inside Oe's head is that Katoon had Braille on her face. Some fans have said that it spells out angel in German. But why is there Braille on her face in the first place? Oe learned a few important things from Katoon. Maybe Katoon is symbolic of books that Oe has read. Another big mystery revolves around the power of touch. I am probably going to do a separate video on this. But check out a few of the clips of OA either touching or refusing to touch someone. Do you want these? No, 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 don't touch, no touching. You've got these. And no touching. This is ridiculous. Don't bite my dog! Oh good. You're okay. Don't fucking touch me, bitch! Now let's talk about a couple strange things regarding Rachel. Unlike the other four captives, Rachel never found a movement. Evelyn found the fifth movement. Also, the plants are dead in Rachel's section in episode 5, so a common theory is that Rachel is different. Some fans even speculate that she might be an undercover FBI agent. However, I want to point out that the plants are alive both before and after we see them dead. Earlier in the season, OA comments that the only reason the plants are alive is because they speak to them. Now remember that Rachel fell at one point and was unconscious. While unconscious, she was unable to speak to her plants. Maybe this is when they died. In episode 5, there are some inconsistencies with the cuts on Homer's head. Here, the gashes are bleeding on both his forehead and his eyebrow. Back inside, the blood and the gashes are both gone, and he was not wearing a band-aid. Then, upstairs, he has on a band-aid. Then the band-aid is gone, and he is bleeding again. Most likely, these inconsistencies were just slight errors in production, but I figured I'd throw it out there in case we learn down the road that this event somehow actually occurred inside Homer's head. In the last couple episodes of Season 1, Hap refers to the movements as a form of technology. Comparing interpretive dance to technology seems like a stretch, but think about it. If the movements can actually be used to help humans move between dimensions, and I am game to also refer to them as a form of technology. Here's a little Easter egg. When Steve and French are trying to verify whether the story with Evelyn is real or not, they stumble upon a reference to people reappearing inside the Bermuda Triangle with no memory of how they got there. It will be interesting to see in Season 2 if this relates to any of the characters we know, or to interdimensional travel in general. And at the very end of Season 1, we see OA inside a white room. We also hear her say, Homer? But I just wanted to point out that we did not see her say Homer. The voice occurs when the screen is all black, so we don't know when she actually called out his name. In other words, season one of the OA. The finale, and even the final few seconds of the finale, are all open to interpretation.